Hey everyone, uh, welcome. My name is Marion Abbott. I am the woman behind all the accompaniment tracks. This is my very first live, so I have no idea. <laughs> I, I kind of have no idea what I'm doing. I read all of the tips and everything, but I still don't really know what I'm doing. But I really wanted to start um, doing these and sharing uh, my thoughts and ideas on repertoire, on um, performance, and everything else that I feel I can share. Um, I'm coming for you to you, sorry, from Brampton, Ontario, in Canada, and I am so sorry that the, my background is so bland. That is my kitchen and the gray wall. Um, but I'm in the middle of prepping for a big move, so all of my awesome stuff, all of my Disney stuff, all of my books—they're all packed, which is killing my soul right now. Killing my soul. Um, but uh, but the once I move, it'll be um, it'll be a really really great beginning. And no, I'm not going to tell you where I'm moving yet. It's uh, all sort of up in the air um, as we wait for the big pieces to land. Anyway, um, I don't know. I I feel like there's a few people online. If you want to tell me who you are and and where you're tuning in from, um, I would love to know that. I'm going to talk today about competitive repertoire. I always feel like I have to like get my hands involved when I say competitive repertoire because I this topic gets me gets me going. It sets me on fire because I feel like it is something that singers, performers, artists, um, and their teachers don't. They're not intentional about and and I I know without a doubt that competitive songs make a difference and competitive songs give you an edge. And I'm going to talk about that. Hello, a Andy. Hi, Andy. Thanks for being here. Um, I think maybe you have much better weather than me today. It is so gray and cold and dreary here. Um, so I really hope that the sun is shining where you are. Thanks for joining me. Um, so I'm going to just, I'm going to dive in. Um, but, oh, hey, Leanne. Hey, I know Leanne and Grace from Newfoundland. And Shauna, yes, amazing, awesome. Thanks, Shauna. Thanks for being here. Oh, I think, do I get to like like these? Oh, I get to like your comments. This is all a whole thing. Okay, I'm learning. I'm learning as I go. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I have obviously I've worked as an accompanist forever, and that's why I've recorded all the tracks. Um, but I have worked um, on audition panels either as the audition pianist um, but also on the panel. So the director, the producer, I've, I've kind of done it all. And I have seen so many artists get passed over because they didn't choose a competitive song to sing. They didn't choose a competitive song to sing. And, and that's something you can control because in this artistic world of performance, there's so little you can you can control. There's there's you can't control the quality of the accompanist at the audition. You can't control the fact that the director didn't get enough sleep last night and and the song that you chose is so beautiful and and lovely that it literally like they kind of dozed off and like missed a chunk. Like you can't control very much of these auditions, but you can control what song you choose to sing. And so I'm I'm begging and asking you to choose competitive repertoire. Aw, thanks, Shauna. I appreciate you saying that. <coughs> Sorry, I have a cold. So what is a competitive song? I'll tell you what's not a competitive song. Happy birthday. Happy birthday is not a competitive song. We go into this weird passive state, depending on how we feel about the person whose birthday it is, right? Happy birthday to you. How nice. Or we're at the restaurant and we're really embarrassed and we're like, oh, my God, she's my best friend. Happy birthday. But we're we're in this weird, mediocre, passive, odd space, right? A competitive song allows you, the artist, to show your most vibrant colors. Look, my hands got in there again. A competitive song allows you, the artist, to show off your most vibrant colors. So <clears throat> that can be vibrant emotional-wise. It can be vibrant vocal range-wise. But they've got to be vibrant. So 
again, examples of non-competitive songs, because I am going to dive into um, some examples of competitive rep. Uh, Castle on a Cloud from Les Mis. We all know it. We all love it. It's sweet. Bring out the girl with the broom, right? Woe is her. She lives a life of sadness. But it doesn't, it, it doesn't allow for big, bold, vibrant colors, right? She sort of stays in that soft, dreamy, sadness zone. Not very competitive. That doesn't show me on the panel all that you're capable of. On my own. Another song from Lima is we all love. One of the best unrequited love songs out there, right? We've all sung it. We've all... <laughs> We've all sung it in our cars or sung it about the, the love that got away and never noticed us. But is it competitive? Does it show a variety of vibrant colors? I would say no. It shows a few, but not a whole lot. Hey, Beth, it's so good to see you. Yay, Beth. I actually met Beth through adjudicating. Um, so a competitive song enables the artist to show their most vibrant colors. Cool. So the first one I'm going to talk about, that's actually for younger singers. I'm going to copy paste a link to it on my channel so you can go there and find the sheet music and find out more about it. And hey, you can use the track if you want or not. But the first one I'm going to is, can you all see it? Okay, cool. There it is. First competitive song I want to talk about is Quiet from Matilda by the brilliant Tim Minchin. Um, first of all, I just want to say that score is so smart. And no matter how many times I've heard the pieces and taught the pieces and coached and adjudicated, rah, 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 I still find new things. I still, I'm still amazed by uh, Tim's brain. Anyway, thank you, Tim. Uh, Quiet from Matilda. So if you don't know the song well, it starts out Matilda sort of in a bit of a bit and she's very upset and the rhythm is really fast and the text is really fast and it's super intense and it just goes and 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 then there's a change in the story and she says and suddenly suddenly everything is and the song screeches to a halt it's like somebody puts the brakes on tim put the brakes on when he was writing it and it shifts to this entire entirely different color so you've got this intensity you've got this frustration you got this rage you got this sadness and then it shifts into this absolutely still still moment and when it's done well it wins when i as an adjudicator see that a competitor is going to sing quiet i'm like if it's done well enough, it's going to win because it's going to show me so much of what that young artist can do. And in an audition room, it's going to show the panel how much you can do. You didn't go into some, you know, passive, I love this thing, but it doesn't love me back mode or aren't the flowers bright today? Isn't everything happy? It goes from boom, 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 to absolute stillness. And if you can pull that off as an artist, I know on the other side of the panel, you're going to be able to pull off so much. So quiet from Matilda. Okay, so the next one, I'm going to grab it from my uh, little cheat sheet here. <coughs> next one's not as well known, and I have been preaching about it forever. Hey, Max, thanks for being here. Spain, how awesome are you? Thanks for tuning in. Um, this next song is, is called Proud Lady, and it's from The Baker's Wife by Stephen Schwartz. So you all know Stephen, you all know Stephen Schwartz, of course, because he wrote, um, oh, I don't know, Wicked. And he helped write uh, Pocahontas and Hunchback of Notre Dame. And then on his own, he wrote Pippin. He wrote The Magic Show. He wrote, um, I'm forgetting another big, huge one. Ah, it fell out of my brain. Anyway, Godspell. There it is. Proud Lady is from Baker's Wife. Baker's Wife, it's problematic as a show. It's got issues with the script. But basically, there's a baker and he has a wife. Ooh, I know. I know, right? 
And then there's a handsome young dude that comes along. And the reason it's um, significant is because the baker is actually quite a lot older than his wife. So when the hot young dude comes along, that's, you know, does, should, should the young baker's wife think about kissing the hot young dude? So Proud Lady is sung by the hot dude. And I'm sorry, but I don't remember his name. <laughs> that's kind of like a perk and a defeat of getting older you don't remember character names as well but then there's but you're older so you're like I don't care it's fine anyway so hot young dude comes out and it starts out with this massive sound and he sings I'm in love and he sings he just fills the room with sound and joy because he's so passionately in love with this woman and then it goes, so it goes into these broad, 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 broad phrases. And then it goes into the super rhythmic up-tempo part that's patter. And Schwartz is incredible for rhythm. He's incredible for rhythm. So it goes into this, like, really, it builds suspense. It builds excitement. It builds intrigue. And then it goes back to those huge, large phrases at the end. It requires so much of an artist to sing. Um, like it's, it, it, it requires big sound, bold choices. But again, if you can pull that off in the audition room, I'm like, you can, you can do the show because you've shown me so much range already. And in a competitive environment, if it's a competition, it's a winning song. It's just a winning song because you're going to get to show off that much more to the panel, to the judges, to whomever is uh, is uh, is watching him. So proud lady, baker's wife. Yeah? Okay, the next one I want to talk about is one I recently, I actually played this role in the olden days when I was in performance school. Yes, I went to performance school. Uh, what's back? Interested in updated secondhand rows as performing this on the stage soon. Oh, Okay, best way to um, talk to me about that, Megs, is uh, is email me. I'll put my email in the chat. Um, thanks, Shauna. Uh, Rose's Confession. So, Mystery of Edwin Drood, if you don't know the show, um, it's based on the book by Charles Dickens, but Charles Dickens didn't finish it. So he sets up the mystery of the show, and then he died. Not the show, sorry, of the book, and then he died. So the musical goes up to the end of where the where Charles Dickens died. And then um, the audience votes on who they think the murderer is. It's very, very cool. It's hell to rehearse. I When we did it, I remember praying fervently that I would not get voted for certain things because we just didn't have enough time to rehearse it all because there's all these endings. But I did get voted the murderer, I think twice. And so I got to sing Rose's Confession. So Rose's Confession, it's written for a soprano, um, a legit soprano voice. But I recently uploaded um, the 2012 12 version, which doesn't go as high. It starts in the same place, but then it, I don't know, the way the key change works, it doesn't go as high. So there's that option as well. But I don't know of any other song where you get to confess a murder. And the cool thing about the confession if that's a thing about murder confessions, is it possible to have cool things about murder confessions? Is that she didn't mean to kill the dude that she killed. So you have this, <coughs> excuse me, it starts out with this crazy maniacal laughter because she's on the brink of like <laughs> falling apart. And she's like, <laughs> yes, I killed him. And then she tells the story, but then she gets to share that she's you know despondent because she literally killed the dude she's supposed to marry in the show. Hello, I don't know of any other song that's more exciting to share. Oh my gosh, you get to confess a murder. Hopefully that won't happen here in your real life, but this is an opportunity for you to do it in your stage life. Again, if I see this song on the panel, I'm going to know that you are the real deal, that you are bold and that you have what it takes to do the show. So Rose's Confession. Steve, what's your opinion? Hi, Steve. What's your opinion on singing songs for a different gender? I will circle back to that, okay? I'm going to talk about 
Um, I've got one more song I want to talk about sort of in detail, and then I will circle back to that question because that's a great question. And it's a, it's a question for our time, baby. Um, okay. So Rose's confession from Drew. So the next, the last song I want to talk about in detail is a song that I am so sorry to tell you, you can't buy the full copy of sheet music anymore. So if you're interested in doing this song, just send me a little email, send me a little email. Um, and it says that on my channel too. So see what it gets you is from anyone can whistle. Anyone can whistle is what I call baby song time. Oh, baby song time. So um, he had done funny thing happened on the way before him. And then he was going to write, you know, this show. And <laughs> I think he just took on too many things. Like he, he was trying to take down religion. He was trying to take down politics. He was trying to take down, you know, stereotypes of like, he was fighting so many things in the libretto. They were going to, you know, they were going to show us that like the libretto was just sort of, sort of kind of a mess. And I, I can say that because I've produced it and just all the things, but the score has lots and lots of gems and that's where baby song time. I don't know that he ever really was baby song time, right? Like he just started like pouring out these incredible pieces right from the get go. What I love about see what it gets you. And I can, and actually I can say this for the three previous songs as well, is that it jumps in the deep end right from the get go. In an audition setting, in a competitive setting, I'm not a fan. Well, some competitive settings, it's okay. But in an audition setting, you don't have time. You don't have the luxury of eight or nine get into it bars of singing. I'm going to think about the way I'm going to share. You don't have that luxury. You've got one chance to grab the panel. And I like to say grab them by the throat, right? Because that's startling and and crazy. And we on the panel, we want that. We want you to shock us and amaze us and startle us. But it's not going to happen if your song starts out, yesterday I thought about the past. So this song and the three songs that I just mentioned, they jump the heck in the deep end. So this is a rant. This character, um, she's angry because she's been duped. She's been tricked. And she's so mad. And it's literally two and a half minutes of rant. And you get to show the anger. You get to show shock. You get to show the sadness of that. You get to show um, defeat. You get to show determination to keep going. It is a badass competitive song. And nobody does it. It is hard to play. Um, but I learned it because I loved it so much. And I kept giving it to people. So, um it's sort of easy to fake. So if you have a decent accompanist in your life, um, generally they'll be able to kind of figure out their version of faking it, but you can always use my track. Like that's always an option, obviously. So those are four to get you started. The other ones I wanted to just touch on briefly was um, one that everyone will know is you'll be back from Hamilton, right? That shows um, huge range. He's, he's, she's evil. He's, um, they're delighting in the evil. They're delighting in the fact that, um, you know, America is going to come back. Like there's so many amazing colors in that song that the brilliant, sorry, I'm just getting this list ready to copy paste for you. Um, the brilliant Lin-Manuel Miranda created, um, and God bless Jonathan Groff and his voice from heaven. Don't you think that voice is from heaven? I think it's from heaven. Um, <laughs> shot it. Yeah. Like it's super dangerous. But like I said, just fake, just tell your accompanist or if you're playing it, just fake, just fake it. It's fine. Because if the, the singer is in the pocket and knows what they're doing, it tells that story with all that's in them. They won't notice the piano part. They'll be like, oh, it's on time. We understand. <coughs> so before I circle back to the Steve's question, here's a list. Oh, did it? I don't know why it's not. Let's see. My list is not uh, sending. Ah, Okay, my little list of songs is not pasting for some reason in the comments. So I will I'll add it at the end. So, but just quickly, um, you'll be back from Hamilton, which I touched on, Just Around the River Bend from Pocahontas. That is an incredible song for a singer. Um, she Loves Me from She Loves Me. I know that's one of my most popular tracks, actually, which gives me great joy 
because it's such an amazing song. But it, again, it shows huge colors, huge colors of joy, huge colors of excitement, huge colors of, of fear and, um, and trepidation about what happens next. Um, it's incredible. Tonight at eight from She Loves Me, another one. And that one shows the comedic timing between the, the vibrant colors, which is wicked. Um, Old Maid from 110 in the Shade. If you're not familiar with that one, please look it up. Um, everybody loves, yeah, Shauna. I love that Shauna knows all my songs. Um, everybody knows Simple Little Things from 110 in the Shade. A lot of people know Raunchy. Throw Raunchy to the back of the binder. Old Maid. It's about the fear of growing up because at the time this was the, this was your fear, not getting married and being the aunt and being the old maid aunt in the family. It's very, very incredible. Yes. I also love, I got a girl, Shauna from Bells Are Ringing. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you got to die sometime from falsettos. I always get confused about is it falsetto land or falsettos, but you got to die sometime. No, no, no. Wait, is that, or is that a new brain? Ah! Now I'm panicking. I'm panicking on YouTube live. I'll have to figure that one out. I'll, I'll figure it out before I um, post it in the, the video notes. And then my final one is forbidden fruit from the apple tree in forbidden fruits. It's the serpent singing to Eve, trying to convince Eve to bite the apple. It's awesome. Again, you get to be evil. You get to show all of this. You're like trying to lure You're you're celebrating. It's, amazing. You get to be sneaky. It's so good. So like I said, I will put those in the video notes. Um, and I'll link at most of these, I think are on my channel and I'll link them. And then you can find the sheet music and more information about the song. Um, while I answer Steve's question, if you have questions about competitive rep, or if you have a song you're working on right now, or that you're thinking about maybe learning for an audition, and you want to know my thoughts on if it's competitive or not, um, please put that in the chat. I would love to hear it. Uh, Steve, so what's my opinion on singing a song for a different gender? <coughs> Here's my thing. I think we live in a world where different gender now is sort of like a term like I don't even know where it applies sometimes um, because gender fluidity is a thing, which is great. It enables people to um, be who they truly feel they are inside on the outside. Brilliant. Amen. Here's my thing. <laughs> No matter what song you choose to sing. So if tomorrow I decide I'm going to sing Music of the Night from Phantom of the Opera. Uh, tenor voice, have I not. I not. It's not even my kind of song. If you're going to sing a song and the original gender that it was written for is not the one that you are, or however the phrase would be, get the very best key for your instrument. Put the song in the very best key for your instrument. All of our voices have their sweet spots, right? There are certain songs. I always like to say songs are like clothes. It doesn't matter how awesome you thought it looked on the mannequin or how you looked in your mind. You're like, I'm going to put this on. I'm going to look so amazing. And then you put it on the dressing room and then you start laughing and you send a selfie to your best friend or your mother and you start laughing because you look ridiculous. Like it just doesn't flatter you. <laughs> that's the same with songs and that's the same with key signatures of songs. So if you are going to take on a song that was written for a gender that is different from your own, all the power to you, go for it, but find a key that shows off your voice to its fullest. And you may not be able to find it. It may be one of those songs that just doesn't fit correctly. <laughs> And that's okay. doesn't mean you can't sing it. doesn't mean you can't enjoy that song. But maybe for auditions or voice juries or recitals, maybe that's not the best choice because you want to show off the very best of you. And the very best of you is the most vibrant colors of you, of your personality, of your voice, all the most beautiful, beautiful um, sounds of your voice. So does that, that's my, that's my take on it, Steve. Um, it's kind of cool to have started my career when that wasn't a thing. Like that wasn't a thing when I went to performance school, like girls didn't sing boy songs and boys didn't sing girl songs. Like absolutely not. And now, you know, 
It's completely changed. And I think that that's such a significant thing for Sondheim to have done before we lost him, right? Was that he worked on company and flipping it and, <coughs> excuse me, and making that music accessible to everybody. Um, and it brings so many more layers to storytelling, right? The more of us that tell these stories in our from our own perspective, um, the more exciting the world it's going to be, right? Um, but please, please, please get the key that shows off your voice to the max because that's what we want right um yeah i hope that's helpful uh, i'm trying to think so i think that that wraps it up for what i wanted to share today um like i said i'm going to start doing these more often and just talking about um highlighting repertoire that i wish people would would sing more that i think um you know are a really good addition to rep books i do offer a service called rep book makeovers <coughs> And that's where if you feel you need um, new song suggestions for your rep book um, and you can tell me why, if it's for auditions, if it's for competitions, if it's uh, just to sort of expand um, what it is you're already singing, um, you can fill out um, a, a form that I have and uh, and I'll do that for you. I just need a video or two of you singing so I have a sense of what your voice sounds like and what your personality is like. I just put that in the chat. Um and then, and then I asked you to tell me the last three or four songs you've worked on. Um, so I got like recommending songs you've already done. Uh, Shauna, a lot of these are quite up tempo. Do you have any suggestions of slower tempo song? Yeah, but I'd have to think about it because, like I said, slower songs, ballads tend to take a while to get going. And that wastes valuable time, right? Um, in a singing competition, when it's, you know, a festival or um, I know they have lots of sort of university level um, music competitions, you have a little more leeway, but not a lot. So a song that I do think can win is Pretty Funny. Pretty Funny from da Dogfight. That's a ballad. Here, I'll put that in the chat for you. Um, from Dogfight. Um because it's such a, a startling story by startling. I mean, like the pain is so raw and present that there's room for humor as well. Um, but it takes a while to get going and either you've got to cut it so that you don't spend a lot of time in like setting the scene and you get right to the juice or you're going to have to like charge through it and like push the tempo as much as you can. So that's why with ballads, I'm a little iffy. Another song that I do think can win and I've, and I've seen win is um, she used to be mine from waitress, but again, it takes a while to get going. Um, so that's what I would say, Shauna, generally up tempos are more competitive than ballads because in an up tempo, my mentor who like taught me pretty much 90% of everything that comes out of my mouth was taught to me by this one woman. She said to me once, um, you ask a singer to sing a ballad so you know that they can sing and you ask them to sing an up-tempo so you know that they can act. Because in an up-tempo, you don't have time, right? Like it changes so fast. So another great song is um, Buddy's Blues from Follies. And for fun, give yourself a treat. Look up Mandy Patinkin performing Buddy's Blues. It's insane. It's like, it, it still leaves, I'm going to actually watch it again today. It still leaves me in shock at how fast the changes are. His energy is off the charts. It's not the same as losing my mind. I love losing my mind from Follies. And if you don't know losing my mind from Follies, please, please add it to your life. It is, <laughs> it's one of the best ballads ever. Takes a long time to get going. <coughs> um, there's a song from the movie Valley of the Dolls called I'll plant, I'll plant my own tree. I will tie it. Into, oh, it looked high and low for a published version. Ooh. No, but email me, Steve. Email that to me, and then I will ask my uh, colleagues who I know who are really good at, like, sourcing that kind of thing. Um, so email me. If it's in my inbox, it gets done. If it's, like, in a, if it's in a comment or, like, even if you text me or message me on Facebook, get it. But if it's in my inbox, it'll eventually get done. So email that to me for sure. Um, Shauna, for a singer who always likes to sing quiet, then you want to find songs that offer you the avail uh, the um, 
opportunity to do both. So old maid does that. Old maid requires like big charged energetic sounds and then this the stillness as well. Um, so does this song called No More. I will add that to my list when I post the whole list. Um, no More. And it's from a, a show called The Goodbye Girl. And it actually opens the show. And it was Bernadette Peters who sang it. And it's To Die For Incredible. So again, it starts out as sort of this power ballad, but then it shifts into this crazy, hilarious um, patter. And then it goes into like almost an up-tempo, like desperation. And then it goes back to that power ballad thing. So it does enable you to do all things. <coughs> Leanne, love the thing. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. So if there's any other questions, I will, um, I will answer them. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it. I, <laughs> I hope this all like you know, was right. And I don't know, I like pushed all the right buttons. Um, like I said, I'll add this whole list to the, to the show notes of show notes. I don't know what you call these, the video notes, wherever the heck it is. I usually put like the link to the sheet music on my channel. And um, I just want to thank you. Uh, if you're watching this now, or if you're watching this on a, on a replay, thank you for using my channel. It has been someday. I'll tell the story of, of how this channel came to be, but it came to be by accident. And I had no idea um, how it's changed my life and it's uh, connected me to singers all over the world. And that is amazing. <laughs> like It's just been such an amazing ride. So I will wish you all an amazing Tuesday and uh, enjoy the weather wherever you are. We, us in Canada and the Ontario area, will cry about the weather for the rest of the day, but we'll get through. All right. Thanks so much. And uh, competitive repertoire. I got my hands ready again. Competitive repertoire. Make competitive choices. Okay. I'll see you next time.